Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and welcome to another video review. Today, I will be looking at the Epox 8K 5A 3 Plus motherboard. What is included in this package are a couple of cables. You get a floppy cable, as well as one ATA-133 cable. Also, two extra USB 2 ports. This goes plugged directly into the motherboard to give you a total of six USB 2 ports on this motherboard. As well, you have a MIDI or game port. This goes plugged directly into the motherboard as well. We also get some high point RAID drivers and some other drivers and software, the manual and the motherboard. This motherboard is based upon the VIA KT333 chipset. Let me now just go over and detail some of the key features that is on this motherboard. Right here is where the AMD Duron or Athlon CPU gets installed. You can also install up to 4 gigabytes of DDR memory. Right here are the two IDE channels and also on this board is the High Point 374 RAID controller and that supports up to 8 hard drives. Right here also is the floppy controller. Something else that's on this board is a post display which stands for power on self test and it basically is a great way of determining problems that is wrong with the motherboard. Also on this board are six PCI slots and one AGP slot. Right here is where the power connection goes and there is three fan headers on this motherboard. There's one right here, one right here, and one right here. This motherboard does have support for both a PS2 mouse and a keyboard right here. Also on this board we have four USB 2 ports. Now remember there's also an extra two that you can plug into the motherboard as well giving you a total of six but these are located on the back right here and right here. Also the parallel port, the two serial ports, and the Ethernet connection. Also this board has the built-in AC97 digital audio and the connections are like so. At the top here we have the mic, this is the line in, and at the bottom the speaker. I will be looking at some of the key features within this BIOS. First I'll be looking at the advanced BIOS features and in here this is pretty common stuff. You have your CPU, internal cache, your external cache. You also can enable or disable the Athlon 4 SSE instruction in here as well. And of course you could do your first boot, second boot, third boot also within this part of the BIOS. The advanced chipset features is another part of the BIOS and this is really where you tweak the memory as well as a few other options. In the memory part of this you have a few performance options which you can select right off the top. Normal, fast, fastest or turbo. You can go down here as well and select manual. Then you can adjust the bank interleave, the latency timing and so on and so forth. Also within this part of the BIOS you have features down here called the system BIOS cacheable and the video BIOS cacheable and also in here you can adjust the AGP and P2P bridge control. Now in here really is your video. You can adjust the aperture size, the mode, as well as the drive control and as well as the fast write. Within the integrated peripherals part you can go in here and really control your onboard USB your RAID, your audio, and things like that. You can also control your IDE channels, either enable or disable those. Another handy feature which is in this BIOS is called PC Health Status. Within here you can view your system temperature, your CPU temperature, your fan speeds, as well as all the voltages. Now something that this BIOS has within this area, it has a CPU warning temperature which you can set and also it has a shutdown temperature. This is great because if your system reaches that temperature it will shut down. What many people are interested in is the overclocking functions in any BIOS. Well, this one has plenty of them. You can adjust the front side bus setting all the way up to 255. I was using Corsair memory and I was able to get a maximum front side bus overclock on this motherboard of 185. Also down here you can adjust the multiplier if you have unlocked your CPU. And further down we have voltage settings for both the memory as well as the CPU. Now the CPU voltage goes all the way up to 2.2 volts. 
I recommend anything above 1.85 you go extreme cooling like H2O. Now with the memory you can go up to a maximum of a plus 0.70. The CPU result is 4,615. The CPU multimedia benchmark result is 9,212. Using Corsair's 3200 memory and a front side bus of 185 megahertz, I was able to get a result of 2,586. And the result is 42,423. At 1024 by 768 at 32 bit, the 3D Mark 2001 second edition result is 11,885. These are the settings for the Comanche 4 demo, a screen resolution of 1024 by 768, the bit depth is 32, texture compression is checked, I disabled the V-Sync, and hardware shaders are checked. And the result is 38.37 frames per second. The Quake 3 Arena settings are, the video mode is 1024 by 768, the bit depth is 32 bit, the geometric detail is high, the texture detail is at max, the texture quality is 32 bit, and the texture filter is trilinear. And the result is 226.2 frames per second. In the XS mark, all the settings are default except for screen resolution of 1024 by 768 at 32 bit. And the result is 8182. This motherboard is both great at overclocking as well as stability and price and performance. Epox has certainly put together another fantastic socket 462 based motherboard. Overall, this is a kick ass product. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also, be sure to pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com. And when you're there, you can go into the forums. If you haven't already registered, registration is completely free. You can go in there and leave your own suggestions and comments and find out all kinds of information about all the products I video review. Until the next time, take care.